you would at some point in time have seen this definition of a limit. This is the infamous epsilon delta definition. And if you like an intuition on this definition, 3Blue1Brown has made an amazing video whose link I've left in the description for you to check out. In this video, we're going to use this definition and I want to show you a much simpler way to prove limits using this definition. Let's consider the limit as x approaches 2 of 3x being equal to 6. The usual technique is to fix some positive epsilon and express the absolute value of 3x minus 6 in terms of the absolute value of x minus 2. This allows us to choose delta to equal epsilon over 3, then if the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than delta, this would imply that the absolute value of 3x minus 6 being equal to 3 times the absolute value of x minus 2, using the assumption, must be less than 3 delta. Using our choice of delta, this must equal to 3 times epsilon over 3, which simplifies to epsilon. This is a valid proof since for any epsilon, we have found a delta in terms of this epsilon such that if the absolute value of x minus 2 is smaller than delta, then the absolute value of 3x minus 6 is smaller than epsilon. This establishes the limit that we wanted to prove using the epsilon delta definition. However, I'd like to suggest a slightly different approach to this problem. The key trick is to use a substitution t being equal to x minus 2. This encodes the problem in terms of an error with respect to 2 rather than the x values of the function. This tells us that x must equal to 2 plus t. This substitution helps us do something rather remarkable. We can reformulate the original limit problem in terms of these substitutions. Since t is equal to x minus 2, as x approaches 2, t must approach 0. And since x equals to 2 plus t, we can replace every instance of x with 2 plus t. Employing a bit of algebra, this is equivalent to showing that the limit of 3 times t equals 0. Using these substitutions, we can reformulate the entire epsilon delta definition in terms of input errors and output errors. Similar as before, we can fix some positive epsilon and express the absolute value of 3t as 3 times the absolute value of t. This should be much clearer to see since we only need to worry about the absolute value of t and no other strange expression involving t. We can choose delta to equal epsilon over 3. Then, if we restrict the input error to be smaller than delta, this implies that the absolute value of 3t equaling 3 times the absolute value of t using the hypothesis must be smaller than 3 delta. Using our choice of delta, this must equal 3 times epsilon over 3, which equals epsilon. To verify, for any epsilon bigger than 0, we have found a delta bigger than 0 such that if the inputs are bounded by delta, then the outputs are bounded by epsilon. This helps us prove the modified limit proposition, which is equivalent to the original limit proposition. In other words, we have proven the original limit proposition. This approach extends beyond linear expressions and can be used to prove that the limit of x squared as x approaches 2 is 4. Just like before, we will let t equal the gap x minus 2. This means that x equals to 2 plus t, and we can reformulate the original limit problem. Since t equals x minus 2, as x approaches 2, t must approach 0. Since x equals to 2 plus t, we can replace every instance of x with 2 plus t and subtract the ultimate limit with the right side being equal to 0. This is equivalent to showing that the limit of 4t plus t squared as t approaches 0 ought to equal 0. To do this, let's fix some positive epsilon and upper bound the absolute value of 4t plus t squared 
using the triangle inequality to obtain the absolute value of t times 4 plus the absolute value of t. If the absolute value of t is smaller than 1, then 4 plus the absolute value of t must be strictly upper bounded by 5. This allows us to choose the input threshold delta to be the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 5. This means when we restrict the input error, the output error will be upper bounded by the absolute value of t times 4 plus the absolute value of t. And using our hypotheses, we can upper bound this expression by delta times 5. Using our choice of delta, delta is not more than epsilon over 5. This entire expression equals epsilon. This means that for any output error threshold epsilon, we have found an input error threshold delta such that when the input error is bounded by delta, the output error is bounded by epsilon. This helps us verify the modified limit statement, which is equivalent to the original limit statement, which helps us prove the original limit statement. This trick even works for modified quadratic expressions. Just like before, we will let t equals to x minus 2 and reformulate the original problem. As x approaches 2, t approaches 0, and every time we see an x, we can substitute 2 plus t. Using algebra, this means we want to show that the limit of 3t plus t squared as t approaches 0 is 0. Once again, fix an output error threshold epsilon, express the absolute value of 3t plus t squared in terms of the absolute value of t. And once again, if the absolute value of t is bounded above by 1, then 3 plus the absolute value of t must be bounded above by 4. Now we can choose the input error threshold delta to be the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 4, so that when we restrict the input error to delta, this will imply that the output errors are bounded above using the various upper bounds that we've derived, this is strictly smaller than delta times 4. Since delta is not more than epsilon over 4, this expression is not more than epsilon. This means that for any output error threshold epsilon, we have found an input error threshold delta such that when the input error is restricted by delta, the output error is restricted by epsilon. This helps us prove the modified limit statement and therefore we have proven the original limit statement. We can even use this technique to find the limits of cubic functions. Once again, we will let t equals to x minus 2 and reformulate the original limit. As x approaches 2, t approaches 0, and every time we see an x, we replace it with 2 plus t. Doing a little bit of algebra, we want to show that the limit of 12t plus 6t squared plus t cubed as t approaches 0 is 0. Fix the output error threshold epsilon, upper bound the output error in terms of the input error, and when the input error is upper bounded by 1, 12 plus 6 times the absolute value of t plus the absolute value of t squared is not more than 19. We can choose delta to be the smaller of 1 and epsilon over 19, so that when the input error is restricted by delta, this will imply that the output error is restricted using the upper bounds that we've derived, this is strictly less than delta times 19. Since delta is not more than epsilon over 19, we can upper bound to epsilon. This means that for any output error threshold epsilon, we have found an input error threshold delta, so that when the input error is bounded by delta, the output error is bounded by epsilon. And therefore, helps us prove the original limit statement. One of the most important limits in calculus is showing that the limit of e to the t minus 1 all over t as t approaches 0 is 1. If you want to know how to prove this limit, click on this video here.